There's a lot of medical news making headlines today. So we have Dr. Pyle Coley here. Yes, yes we do. Dr. Coley, yes. we need you, we need you today. Yes. <laughs> it was kind of a smattering because I started and then yeah. no one clapped. I was like, should we not clap? And we then Jeff do. tried. It was weird. <laughs> Let's get serious for a second. You know, we got to talk about the family of the Louisville shooter who are now saying that they, as a person that had no violent past, that then committed this incredible act of violence, was CTE because he did have a history of concussions involved. What do you think about that and even just posing that question? You know, a little bit of a slippery slope. I mean, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, which is CTE, is a disease that we're now getting more awareness of. It's been around since the 90, 1920s when we first saw boxers kind of changing their personality after after that repeated head trauma. Mm. And what we saw is that the repeated head trauma actually causes the changes in the brain to occur months, years, or even decades later. So we often see that people start having some of those symptoms in their 20s and 30s, but really start having the motor symptoms where they have movement problems and, and other sorts of dementia type of problems in their, in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. But for this particular case, I'm a little bit skeptical because I, I mean, it sounds like he had three episodes of head trauma. Not all of them led to concussion, and we know that not everybody that has CTE, or excuse me, that has head trauma ends up developing CTE. So I'll be curious to see what the autopsy shows, whether he does have any early evidence of chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Well, can we test for CTE? It's only an autopsy diagnosis. Oh. So really, somebody has to die. You have to cut up their brain and look at it under the microscope in order to know. There's not an imaging test. There's not a blood test that tells us about it. But, but guys, I think this is really starting a little bit of a dangerous precedent mm -hmm. because every time somebody picks up a gun, acts out on an angry impulse, we start to blame mental Thank health. You. Yeah. We start to blame you know, schizophrenia. We Video start to games. blame depression. Yeah. Yes, and now we're blaming CTE, which is a rare condition that is not all that common. So I think we really need to be talking about the real issue, which is access to guns. Even if he had CTE, if he could not go out and get his hands on a gun, he could not have shot up a bank. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Dr. Coley, you want to go there? I kind of do it's because yeah. this is a public health crisis. It's Friday. Right. All right. Let's no, go. you bring up a good yeah. point, but I don't know if we have time I mean, for I'm it. assuming you'd approach this with the same passion and energy you did with seatbelts initially. Doctors did with seatbelts. Just like this is just a public health crisis. Or smoking. Take, right. Mm -hmm. Or COVID. Right. Look at how everybody was up in arms about COVID. Why is no Nobody really doing anything about gun violence in this country. And we talk about heart disease, cancer in every single one of our visits. And I've started now talking about gun violence wow. because it's something that uh, we have had more that. shootings than days Thank you. in the year, Thank you. you know. Interesting, Doc. I like it. I like it. Take a stand. <laughs> Let's switch gears a little bit, okay? So 40% of Americans, including me, have diagnosed themselves, right? Not contacting a, doc, uh, contacting a doctor, right? I just went online, and I'm like, I got malaria, and that's it. Do you oh. need to see somebody for this language problem? <laughs> 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 wow. Doc, I just complimented you. <laughs> Want me to push back on the gun violence thing? Or, you know, or, so what do you think about people diagnosing themselves online, you know, Doc? It's, it's, <laughs> it's a little bit tricky. So, I mean, in the, in the era of the internet, it would be stupid for me to say, don't go on the internet, don't look up anything, because all of us do it. I mean, even I do it when it comes to legal things or accounting things or home hacks or what have you. But I think there's sort of two roles to, to, to play here. One is researching before you see your doctor. I love that. Like when a patient comes into the visit and says, I read about blah, 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 do you think I could have this? It is a really nice opportunity for me to understand what they're thinking, what they're worried about, what they've read out there. And it's a nice way for me to know kind of what's floating. So I love it when people use it in that capacity, not necessarily to diagnose themselves, but to kick off a conversation with a doctor. But you have to be careful with yes, the sites do. you go to, right? Yeah, and because I'm, I'm sure. just like, I find everything and all of a sudden I start feeling those symptoms. That's right. What? My left That's arm right. hurts. What? I have a left arm yeah. and it hurts now. Oh and then, my yeah. gosh. For real. Or you have a headache and you have a brain tumor. Yes. And then you've just, you know, created a new problem for yourself by worrying about something that you don't actually have. So it's not just the scary catastrophic diagnosis it's also the misinformation which we've talked about so much that's out there that tells you that fish oils are good for you or you know that you know COVID vaccines cause heart inflammation and they cause deaths or whatever it is that you're reading that's wrong so I would say if you are going to go on the internet then use high quality websites the American Heart Association you know Mayo Clinic Cleveland Clinic not Dr. Jackson I was say both. Hey, you, you, you concur Dr. Come, Jackson come see me I oh. wing it you know <laughs> I, I have a doctor show and first of all I call it a doctor show mm. and I just just like whatever you think you have, I'll, I'll think about it and I'll be like, yeah, I think you do. No matter how well he dances on TikTok, do not listen to him. Don't, don't listen to him. He does not dance well on TikTok. I do not. I, I don't do anything on TikTok. I got to work on that. TikTok.
<laughs> yeah, I call it yeah, tic-tac. Yeah, throw a stone at him. Tic-tac. Uh, called yeah. it tic-tac. I didn't call it tic-tac. You called it tic-tac. I s slurred at the end, but I was saying talk. Okay. Play the take back. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Foley, thank you so much for being here and for razzing Jeff. We appreciate that. DBL Nation, did you know Dr. Coley has a podcast? Check out Heart of Medicine wherever you get your podcasts. We'll be right back. Thank and you, Doc. And on tic-tac. <laughs>